Back here in the United States, the Riverside Church in New York City is making news. Leaders of the historic congregation elected the Reverend Dr. Amy K. Butler as the new senior minister. Reverend Butler is the first woman to lead the Riverside Church since its first service in 1930. I had the honor and pleasure of speaking with Pastor Amy, as they call her, earlier today from Washington, D.C. Pastor Amy, first of all, congratulations on this new assignment. I'm sure it's exciting for you and your family, but it's not exactly new for you. You were the first female senior pastor at Calvary Baptist Church there in Washington, D.C., which is also uh, a historic church. However, Calvary is not quite as large as Riverside. And of course, D.C., while is a, the seat of government in this country, is a little bit different than New York City, which is an animal all to itself. Uh, yes, and you're coming from the Baptist denomination to an interdenominational church. So how are you going to approach all of these changes and transitions? Question. I'm working my way through it. Um, some of these things you don't know until you do, so I'm making my way step by step. Um, I am very, very excited to be coming to Manhattan and to be, uh, be beginning this relationship with the Riverside Church. Um, and I think those relationships are going to help me navigate some of this newness. I'm really excited. Uh, you know, for those who are people of faith, they do believe that all things work together for the good. So certainly your uh, appointment there at Calvary has prepared you for this appointment at Riverside. What lessons did you learn there that you think are going to be invaluable to you once you get here? You know, Debbie, in a lot of ways, I, I see glimpses of grace all over this situation. And one of them, of course, is these last 11 years that I've had as pastor at Calvary Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. Um, these people here in this community of faith have taught me what it means to um, live a historic witness in a beautiful old building, but be at the edge of change and living into the future of what the church is going to become. And so... With that experience, um, I think I'm, I'm well on my way to jumping in, in there in New York. Of course, what's made the headlines here in the New York papers is the fact that you are the first female senior pastor appointed at Riverside, although you've been a senior pastor for quite some time. But let's talk just a little about, about women in ministry. What, as a woman, um, will you bring to leading this flock that is unique to being female? Well, I, you are right. This is not the first time I've been the first woman. When I came to Calvary, um, I was the first woman pastor at this historic founding church of American Baptists. And, you know, the Washington Post asked me when I came on what it meant to be a woman in leadership. And, well, I do want to note that that's a very important thing to have women in our pulpits and leading our churches these days. Um, that really is not the issue that I wanted to define my leadership at Calvary or at the Riverside Church. I want my issue to be gospel and that invitation that Jesus has given us to love each other and to love God together. And so I, I think it's notable and I'm, I'm proud to be the first woman at the Riverside Church and I hope that we can make gospel our issue. <laughs> And fa fair enough. However, I think that, you know, history, particularly in the church, serves to make this an important conversation. Uh, so many That's denominations right. did not embrace women in leadership positions. Many denominations still don't. I don't know that the Baptist denomination has caught up with some other denominations in that <laughs> regard. You know, I, I right. think some might wonder, you know, do you consider yourself to be a feminist? And I'm going to add in there, does feminism, is feminism mutually exclusive with Christianity? That's a great question. You know, I mean, as any pastor does, I bring every part of who I am to the work of being a pastor. And of course, one of those things is being a woman and, and being a mother and all of those things that I've experienced um, being a, a female in society. And so I think, yes, it is going to inform the way I do my work. It's a, a whole person sort of approach to being a pastor. Um, and no, I don't think that feminism is exclusive of Christianity. In fact, I'm so excited that the church is now opening the doors to another whole half of humanity and the wonderful pastoral voices that so many women are offering the church these days. There are many people in society, in sec secular society, that believe the church should open their doors to many other uh, segments of That's society. Right. Uh, and for that reason, many believe that that is why 
why the church has lost some of its role in society, role in people's personal lives. Uh, church attendance is uh, plummeting over the last few decades. Um, do you have any particular strategy in mind and in place to make church more relevant uh, here? That's a great question. It's a question on the mind of pastors and churches everywhere, as you know. Um, I think the institutional church is becoming more and more marginalized in our society. As you pointed out, people don't go to church because they're required to go to church anymore. And I think that that is a wonderful and exciting shift for those of us who lead congregations because it's going to give us the opportunity to step outside of societal expectations and to really create and nurture communities that are living this radical and, as you said, inclusive gospel of Jesus. So I'm excited. Well, it's so interesting that you say inclusive gospel, and I, I frankly believe with you that the gospel is inclusive. However, uh, you know, the, the person of Jesus is quite a divisive figure uh, in the world right. and in many, other faces, in many other faiths. And, you know, one of the buzzwords in church these days is ec ecumenalism, ecumenicalism. And so how will you be able to maintain a focus and an emphasis on Jesus, but be ecumenical and welcoming to all diversity at the same time. Right. We struggled with this at Calvary, and I think many progressive Christians struggle with this very thing. And I always like to say that we should never be ashamed of claiming Jesus and gospel as the thing that draws us together in our many diverse expressions. Um, I think if, if we don't do that, we could just go to the Rotary Club or something else. Um, gospel is what makes our um, communities unique and what gives us mission and vision in the world. And I always like to say, if you don't leave church a little bit uncomfortable, then that's a problem. I think the gospel is always pulling us into new and more radical expressions of welcome all the time. <laughs> um, so before I let you go, just a lighter question. So are, do you think you're ready for the, uh, the rough and tumble of New Yorkers? You know, we're a unique lot. Boy, I'm starting to learn. You know, one thing I already know is that my feet are really sore just from my visits to New York, and so I'm going to have to get a good pair of shoes, that's for sure. Indeed. I know that you'll start your assignment later on this fall. Again, we wish you congratulations and the very best. And once you get here in New York City, you and your three children, come by and see us here in our New York studios. I'd love to. Thank you so much. Pastor Amy, thank you so much. And again, congratulations, and God bless you.